Welcome back to another After Effects tutorial. My name is Arnold Faller and today I'm going to show you how you can use a 3D camera tracker to precisely position elements in your footage. So uh, let's get right into it. I am going to load a piece of footage that I shot this morning and it is a, um, let's quickly pull it into a composition. It's a 4K uh, piece of footage moving camera shaky handheld and I'm moving past the facade of the building it's about uh, three seconds long 99 frames so um, we would like to place certain elements on the facade on the ground and uh, make sure that those elements really stick to the to the ground so that they're not appear as if they are floating uh, therefore I'm going to start the 3d camera tracker um, it's an effect that you place on the on the layer and the good thing is with this facade is that you have lots of points that can easily be tracked so corners here if it's a plain facade without a lot of uh, structure and texture it is uh, pretty hard for the camera tractor, tracker to deliver a accurate result but let's try it here it works quite well I'm going to pause it for the minute or so that it takes to to solve the point so the thing is you start with uh, your um, with your layer with your movie then you go to the tracker here on the on the right side if you don't have it window and uh, tracker you can turn it on and then you click track camera and from now on it just takes a, a minute or so depending on uh, how long your video is and then it's analyzed so I'm gonna pause the video right here the 3D camera tracker has perfectly done its job. From uh, what you now got is you can see those little uh, colorful dots and you can also see uh, a, a weird uh, a marker jumping around. But let's show you where what, what has been added. So down here in the layer, if you open it, you can see that the effect 3D camera tracker has been added. So uh, a few things that you need in addition to that. Um, you need to create a camera. Here it is. You can either do that by clicking, clicking create camera or you can start by adding your first element into the scene and then uh, it will automatically create the camera. So either click here, create camera or um, let's do this, create camera. And now I have a 3D camera tracker camera. If you don't see those colorful dots, then the reason is that you are on a different layer. So in order to see those dots, you need to go to your tracked layer and also click on camera tracker. Then you can see the points and you can also see your target sign there. So now what you want is you can see that the, uh, in my case, the points have been placed on parts of the facade and parts of the, of the floor and so on. And you can also see the further you go, then suddenly some appear and some get lost or some leave the, leave the camera view. So what you want to do is, you want, uh, when you place an element, let's say I want to place an element here on this piece of facade. We're going to start with uh, a simple text element, maybe just one letter. Uh, what you want to do is you want to move your mouse, and we go to the very beginning. Uh, you move your mouse, and when you find a target, a circle that fits the perspective of the pictures. Don't use one that looks like this because then it doesn't fit the perspective so it should fit the perspective and also you can see that it lights up that there is a uh, maybe on the ground you see it a bit better that there is a triangle lighting up so the, uh, you find the space between three dots for example here so I can hardly show but here's one here's one uh, 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 tracking point here and here so that is a good um, a good position because it is a, a fairly regular triangle so make sure the triangle is not very narrow because when it's narrow then the uh, then there might be a slight arrow in it so now when I'm here I press my right mouse click and now I can create if you haven't created the camera before it will now say create text and camera or create solid and camera or null and camera uh, we're gonna start I'm gonna start with now creating a text and here you can see here's my text element what you already see the text element is sticking to my background plate because it is already uh, linked uh, it's already animated to the to the movement so it's actually uh, uh, it's a 3d object that has been created but we'll have a look later let's first um, select the text object so I am uh, selecting the text object double click it and instead of text, I'm just making a one letter because nothing 
not much more will fit on this position. Uh, to change the size and so on, then you obviously can uh, uh, change the size of the of the character. Therefore, you on the right layer here. So, double click it. Um, the problem is mine is really small. And that was my mistake. So let me quickly delete it one more time. I'm going to um, I'm going to delete the text one more time. That's not what I planned. Now I'm going to uh, make my text font larger before I create it because when you hit uh, so back on the camera tracker, find the position that has a nice nice uh, perspective right click create text the text that you create is always the same size but the size here is the one from the last text element you you put in and mine was one pixel the last text element that i uh, uh that i added so it was pretty small now um i'm having the text element and i can double click it if you do that for the first time it will be 100 or something the text that you used large uh, used last so here's my letter T. Uh, I can uh, I can double click it and change the size so that it fits here. So and now you might see that the perspective when you compare it to the to the wall is not perfectly uh, is not perfectly right. So how can you change uh, the position and the rotation and the perspective? So pretty simple. You select your text layer and first you hit P for position. And you can change your position up and down, left and right. I'm going to leave it uh, where it is, only maybe a little bit to the left. <clears throat> Do not use the position C coordinate because it's a 3D layer, so you have three coordinates, because that will mean that the text will move away from the wall. So it, it will move away or move into the wall, maybe. So that's not what you want. Um, and the next thing is rotation, so hit R for rotation. And you can see the rotation angle here in 3D space. I usually don't change the orientation with one of the first letters, but I add some extra rotation. In this case, I'm going to add some extra C rotation. So to fit it, no, yes, to fit it better in perspective. Okay, now you can play with all kinds of... Uh, uh, blending modes for your layer so you can change the blending modes to whatever multiply and so on so it looks as if it's a graffiti and so on but you will notice it will stick almost perfectly uh, to the to the background so that was uh, a text element now if you want to add another element you would just let's put something on the ground here um, you would go to again to the tracked layer go down to the 3d camera tracker now the points will come and what you can also here it's also quite a uh, quite easy to find a good perspective so here's one for example and i'm going to do a right click and i'm going to create a solid again the solid it will will uh, stick to the background but it will not uh, look good in perspective so i'm going to rotate my track solid one again r for rotation and i'm going to rotate it so may, let's say that it's parallel to the uh, to the floor you can also uh, change it in size so uh, to grab the corner so that, or you can also go to to size of course here and change it with numeric values okay so let's leave it there here's my pink uh, my, my, my pink solid again you can also use blending modes for that uh, uh, which one works best uh, so that's usually a screen is usually brighten it up multiply is darken it down okay then uh, the next thing is um, let's place something that is a little bit further down the picture. So something that is not in the picture, oh, it is always in the picture in the beginning, but let's go further down over here maybe. Um, you can also, let's go back to the tracked layer, track camera tracker, so here are my points again. Instead of using uh, the automatically find, uh, the, 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 three, the three points that he automatically finds and turns them into a triangle, you can also select one point, uh, then shift another point and then shift a third point that will that will create 
a custom triangle that you want to choose. Uh, maybe for this case it's not the best because the automatic one had a better perspective here. So uh, there. And let's add a picture over there. So to add a picture, I usually what I do is I find the perspective and I do a right click and I place, uh, uh, for example, a solid. Here's a solid on the wall. Ch see if it really fits the wall. And now, where is my, I'm gonna, uh, the only problem is every time you add a solid and it's the second, it gets the same name, that is strange. So in the name here, select it and hit enter. And let's call it uh, solid for picture. Solid for picture, doesn't matter, and just any other name than solid one. And um, yes, and now I need a picture, and I'm, I'm not going to use a picture, actually, I'm going to use a video. I just had this weird, found this weird video here. Um, and the video I'm going to pull in, and there it is. And all I need to do is I need to make the video a 3D layer. So right now it's a, it's a 2D layer, so that's why it's parallel to my view. Uh, make the video a 3D layer. And now it's gone. Uh, it's somewhere over here. So uh, now what I need to do is I make to I need to um, fit it to the to the to the solid. And here it is, the picture of the, the the video and the solid. So I select both, and select the video, and go to P for position. Select the solid P for position, and I'm gonna take the the position of the video and use the pick whip here and link it to the position of the solid. So it will always be there. Ah, there it is. See, now it automatically jumps to the, to the solid position. Also, the same thing for rotation. So both rotations on. So rotation for the video and rotation for the solid. And I'm going to grab orientation of the video. The pick whips here is orientation. That's all zero, and here is the orientation for my uh, the orientation for my solid, and I'm gonna grab it and pull it to orientation of the solid. So now they are both at the same uh, position, and they always have the same rotation to the camera and so on. Um, I should have moved the solid before, but do not move the do not move the the, the video. Only move the solid. So go to P for position, and I'm gonna. Uh, move it slightly to the, oh, actually up, and move it slightly to the left. You can later on scale it down. The solid for picture, I am uh, shutting off, and there I am uh, as a picture between the two windows. I could also um, select it and mask it out if you want make it a bit narrower okay just make the picture narrow and if you look closely you can just fix it uh, to a better position but remember do not rotate the video always rotate the solid so the position is done by the position of the solid and the rotation rotation the orientation is also of the solid So, like this, huh? Okay. Orientation. A little bit more. Now it's good. Maybe the X. Uh, no. Good. Let's leave it there. Again, you can play with the blending mode, scaling up and down and so on. And the last thing that I would like to show you, one more thing is... Um, um, is... The null object, you can use null objects for linking something to it. You remember that we had some, some text also. You can link it to it. Um, I would like to use the, um, the uh, shadow catcher. Let's close everything up here, except, of course, the tracked layer, camera tracker, to get my points back. And now I'm going to choose four points that are really far away from each other. So let's take this one and maybe... I don't know, this one, shift, this one, and maybe one shift here. Okay, so we get a quite large triangle. 
and do a right click and this time I'm going to create a shadow catcher and a light. So it will create a, a shadow catcher is like a solid plane and in addition it will create a light that casts a shadow. Uh, the light of course has been added and it's not really perfectly lighting my solid here on the ground that's why the solid got darker so we have to adjust the position of the light to make it stronger but now we have a solid catch uh, a, a light catcher there and in addition to the light catcher again here it is light catcher and light and a right click i'm also creating another text element only this time the text element i'm gonna move it away from the wall so p for position and this time i'm gonna change its c position and you can see it will move away from the wall and it will cast a shadow. So it will really look three dimensional. Why does the T not have a shadow? Because the shadow catcher object, here it is, it has a limited size. It's only a square. And if you want it larger, you have to just grab it here or scale it larger so that the whole facade will get uh, a shadow. And now here's my text object and both the text and the shadow object will stick to the will stick to the uh, to the facade and to the video. Let's quickly render it out and show the uh, and show you how the end result looks like so that we that it actually sticks to the uh, sticks to the 3D space. So I'm pausing the video uh, while I do the preview. I just hit I just hit uh, space. Oh, it's fast. I don't need to pause the video there. Good. So I just hit space to do a, a, a quick preview. When it's green down here that you know that then you can see it's running in real time. But you see the text uh, perfectly sticks to my shaky camera. Also the video here in the back is not floating around a lot. And the ground, yeah. So before, um, before I'm going to finish here is one more thing. How do you edit the position of the light and so on? Let's, uh, and that is, we have a chapter about uh, 3D cameras and 3D elements. And the same thing applies to this video here. So you only have, most of the things are um, 3D elements, except of course the video, because you don't want to make the tracked video 3D, because then it will be in 3D space and you want it filling out the whole so that the perspective fits. So if you look from the top, for example, you can see where my elements are. So here is my camera and the camera of course is animated because I dr drove by but with my bike and that is the path I took. Here is also my light and now you can imagine why some parts are not lit up by the light because the light and let's look from the front, front, the light of course, where is it? Oh here, the light is, um, that's the light. I don't see the light front. Uh, pay for position. Oh, huh, that is strange. Why don't I don't see the light as a symbol? Let's look from the left. Oh, there it is. Huh? Strange. Uh, so you can see that the light will shine on the text element, but it will not look very, uh, will not be very steep on the, on the picture on the ground. Let's bring it up a bit. So let's take the Y value and bring it up. Let's go back to the view. That is the active camera or the 3D tracker camera. In this case, it's the same because we only have one camera. And yeah, still good. So here's the shadow now coming a little bit more from the top. And uh, you get much, a, much more, a little bit more light here on this thing. Okay, so I hope that clear uh, that cleared it up for you guys. The uh, how to use the 3D camera track and how to use the different elements. As I said, it all has to do with the footage that you shoot. The more texture, the more points are trackable on the on the background, the better, of course, the camera tracking works. Okay, try it. I hope you like it, and I'll see you in the next video.